Hello. So, so my name is Emmanuel Benby. I'm a French. I live in Shanghai. I'm a film producer. And uh, I make films that are statement for diversity. Uh, I created a format called Collective Feature Films that I uh, produced in uh, different cities around the world, starting with uh, Paris. Uh, so you can go to next. Just, just play it. And these, this film format, which was uh, sort of triggered by very strong values, uh, became so much more. Uh, it became a social enterprise, and that's what I'm, I'm going to describe. Next one. So these are my films. Uh, what can I say? They, they are famous. They are made of... Uh, I made them with a lot of really famous directors, actors. Uh, talent flying from all over the world to first my city, Paris, and then to New York. Uh, and I built this very specific way to make films um, uh, because my films are made of multiple little stories, uh, more than 10 stories in each film, all love and encounters filled with hope taking place in neighborhoods. And we wrap everything together so that it has unity and it can be exploded as a feature film theatrically and on all media all around the world. So, um, you can move forward. This is just a glimpse at the talent. Um, we discovered a lot of talent for each film. Um, we worked with Natalie Portman when she was very young. Um, let's move. In New York, I produced uh, our first short film. I produced uh, the first short film of Scarlett Johansson. We gave the first, uh, his first part to Bradley Cooper. Shoot, she was involved. In, uh, no, no, it's okay. In Rio, so what, what happened is that the know-how know -how that we accumulated doing these films was very unique. So we consigned it into a production guideline and we made deals with uh, guilds in the US to be able to produce these films at the highest level. And then uh, we were in a situation to, you can go to the next, license uh, uh, movies. <laughs> uh, it's a kind of a new way. Uh, so I have partners around the world who produce these films now for me. For me. And I, I help them. I, I help them uh, make these films. But because Rio was the first license and I was not at the forefront of the production effort, I was able to focus on how you market these films and this is what happened, so next. So that's my format, I will go very quickly on this. 10 directors from all over the world, all telling your love, your love story in five to six minutes and everything wrapped together so that it looks really good and fluid and it can be exploited in, on all media. Um, what we do now is that every time we shoot these movies, uh, we have 10 top talent in town and we uh, source and, and find 10 young aspiring directors in the city. We give them the opportunity to be mentored by these uh, directors over the course of the production. And then we finance them their first short film uh, with a professional crew. Um, so we basically give them their first job and then we help them go to international film festivals and later on we can also help them make their first feature film. That's what we do when we produce a movie in a city. But uh, the following years, we won't have the movie to produce, so we won't have the 10 talents in town. We still keep doing it with uh, 12 talent every year, 10 young filmmakers, recently graduated, and two local celebrities directing for the first time and bringing visibility to the program. So that allows us, of course, to have it financed by sponsors. In... Uh, next one, sorry. Um, in Shanghai, we are doing uh, something a little bit different. We are uh, producing this uh, annual short film competition involving all the schools and, and universities of Shanghai. And we give the opportunity to students above 12 years old to actually write a script. We explain them, we train them over the course of a year. And uh, we uh, help them with a team of professionals and industry suppliers to really have a real filmmaking experience. They produce, they make a film like professionals, even though they are teenagers. And we're doing it for the first time this year in, uh, in Shanghai, and it's incredibly successful, and it's gonna expand a lot next year. 
And it's a way also to mobilize um, uh, the elite of an industry because this industry is an industry from master to apprentice. You know, you, you cannot learn in school, you have to practice. So th this is absolutely uh, necessary. And, and so this is like the first step of what we're doing in Shanghai. It's like a new strategy. And it also as well to uh, make acquaintance with the government because of course in China, there's, a, there's fear between the creative world and empowering young filmmakers uh, uh, and, and, and the government, and that fear is a reciprocal, you know, uh, on both sides. There's a lot of self-censorship and so on. Next. So in uh, Rio, we built this. Uh, that's where, you know, there was a big shift in what I do. Because in Rio, we built this community, uh, this uh, social movement, um, and in a city, it's a city of 6.2 million inhabitants, and this social movement allowed us to raise in about a year, about $10 million to produce the movie Rio, I Love You. So what happened? Um, basically, um, this, this community is showcasing the city in many ways. Uh, and it went from about 17,000 active followers to 1.3 million in 10 months. Um, we have 74% of our followers who are below 24 years old. Uh, so it's extremely impactful and attractive for brands, of course. And some of our videos were seen by more than 4 million local people. Next. So what is it? Uh, basically, these are online uh, uh, initiative, communities, website, whatever you call them. We showcase the city with the best content of local creators. Uh, we use contests, uh, wide distribution, viewership as incentives. We build partnership with creative industries, of course, but we build specific value-driven campaigns with brands. Um, so I'll tell you how we work with brands in a minute. But we want to show love and care to the inhabitants. It's really the purpose of, of these communities. We, we make them proud. So, um, and also we try to spread love in the city and for the city. And when I talk about love, it's not just, uh, you know, <laughs> something uh, cute. <laughs> it's uh, like sustainable development, for example, is love for future generations. It's an expression of love. Like we talked earlier about design being an expression of love. You know, when you work in this field, you realize our love is everywhere. Um, we use storytelling, of course, to feature neighborhoods, communities, craftsmanship, achievements, what we call unsung heroes. Uh, we have a lot of unsung heroes here today, so people would do good around them. And we have to explain people what they do for them. That's really, really important because that's how you change the standards, you know. When people start to understand uh, uh, those who go the extra mile for them, well, um, it accelerates competition in their fields and, and other companies have to adjust. And it's very, very true in urban development, you know. So um, basically the goal is to sustain hope for a young generation also because I come from Europe and in Europe we're very, very depressed and we have depressed our young generation. We don't, we don't have more problems than you, but pro our problems is there. You know, we're a little sick right now. So... Um, of course, we build an audience for creative industries, education, uh, innovation, uh, sustainable development, and we are filmmakers. We know how to tell stories. So we, make, we document everything we do. All these activations become little films, content that are extremely viral. So because I have only eight minutes, and it's exhausting, uh, I, I, um, I cannot show you too many videos, but I'll show you one that summarizes um, the Rio movement. Like.
okay, I can't show you everything, but basically these movements cover every aspect of life and they, are, they become extremely impactful. Uh, let me word it in a simple way. We all have in our heart a little door with the name of our city on it. It's very, very true. And if you know how to open that door, you can make wonders. You can really make change because you touch people. Um, so this is the way we work with brands uh, because, of course, we had to build a self-sustaining model. Uh, and everything I do in film is profit-driven. Everything I do with movement is non-profit, but yet self-sustaining. So uh, we don't show brand's product. We don't do that. We, we build a genuine relationship with people. You can't put a Nike shoes in their face. That doesn't work. They don't listen to you. So we work on the brand equity. We work on the values of a brand. And with these brands, we work at different levels. Of course, we can just show their brands and that's it. We have their logo somewhere on our website and they're happy. Everybody does that. Or we can build a campaign around their contribution to the city. That's key. Contribution for me is you know, it's a major change in the last five years. In many places, if brands don't contribute, they will disappear. And I will support that. So um, creating, that, that, that's the thing, the contribution, you, you cannot imagine what we can do with a brand, like a brand like Unilever, for example. In Rio, we made it uh, finance and, and, and sponsor all the volleyball activities of the city doing a lot of things every weekend, contests, uh, building teams of young people, cleaning the beaches, but that's of course very common, but also uh, re repaying for all the infrastructures, organizing contests, bringing together old people and young people and so on. Basically Unilever without showing a single product is part of everyday life in Rio. And we did that many, many times with different brands. With, with a cosmetic brand, we can, uh, you know, change the life of a square over the course of a day by putting someone with a ton of flowers and that person has the assignment to, to give these flowers to people against kisses, uh, smiles, hugs, that's all they have to do and they get free flowers. We do that a lot, you know, and many, many other things. So um, we build that network of foundations because we think that CSR uh, <laughs> is not very creative, you know, they don't know what well, a lot of companies don't know what to do with that money. They end up supporting orphanages or whatever, something that is tangible. But that's super tangible. If we have a foundation, we can provide them a campaign, giving them public visibility, almost like you know, real publicity, and they can get a tax relief uh, and, and do good things for their city. Also, in this way, they belong, which is very important. They want to belong, right? They want to be part of our lives. Uh, why? Because we are media. Uh, we are the new media. You know, social media, that's not a new marketing platform, that's us. You know, we communicate constantly, we decide. So, uh, next. Um, so that's what I do now in like one slide. Uh, these platforms, these films that have different purposes. For sure, my films now have become promotional vehicles for a higher purpose. They come later in the process. We don't start with the film. We announce the film at the beginning and everybody gets all excited, but we build something much more substantial before that. Next. This is where we stand right now. Uh, a lot of countries are assessing our model. A lot of countries are implementing it. I have partners everywhere. It doesn't depend on me. I never travel. I like Shanghai. I stay in Shanghai all year long. If I had to travel, my model wouldn't be viable. So I, uh, we, we give these people a lot of guidelines. We have the best content planners working for us and, 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 and they help them develop and launch their movements and go over uh, our strategy and our, and our process. Next. So that's pretty much how it starts to launch a movement. It starts with awareness. You introduce yourself as the people of a city. We, we are you, we, are, we care about you. Uh, you should be proud, look around because of course in cities, People have stopped look, looking around and embracing what's around them. Um, and, and so at the beginning, of course, we, we are in the awareness phase. We try to really have them identify to these platforms, these movements that we build. That's the first step. And then we go into uh, engagement, of course. And I heard that word earlier. It works really well. 
uh, you know, uh, active citizenry, or I don't know, you, uh, active citizenship, whatever you want to call it, but it's, it becomes really possible once you have introduced yourself the right way to engage people into doing a whole bunch of things and, and, and actually can generate a lot of business, it can launch talent, it attracts talents, it makes the city alive and so on. Then comes uh, expansion. Expansion is more about communication, it's more about city promotion, not just outside its frontiers, but also, of course, locally, you need to, uh, to, to feel confident about where you live, and, and that is a big engine. So next, uh, I want to first talk about the fact that we are not branding cities. Uh, we, we are really basically showcasing real things. Everything that's on our website happened in real life. So it's all about the relationship you want to have with your people, because this is what we showcase, you know. And uh, um, there's a big uh, problem with... Um, uh, you can go for the next. There's a big problem with the fact that media is not just for entertainment purposes. That's like a big lie, you know. Unfortunately, we've been brainwashed for uh, many, many years, especially since the end of the Second World War, because of Hollywood and the way that the U.S. have, have, have instrumentalized media. Uh, we think that now, now if media doesn't entertain us, see, I mean, we almost do not expect anything more from it, but media is part of our development. You don't control your media, you don't control your development, and that's why I live in China too. Um, next. So that's what I was saying. This is not a new form of social media. This is not a new marketing uh, opportunity. This is us, what's happening. We have been empowered to be the new vehicles for all forms of communication. So this is how we can make change. Next. Um, yeah, we do not protect diversity. Diversity is the art of what we do. Obviously, when you look for ideas to showcase your city, diversity is an amazing engine, and diversity is uh, what has been threatened, of course, uh, uh, by development and profit-driven strategies. So that I already explained. Next. Yes, yeah, so... Um, that's really, really important. You know, most of the thing we hear about when we want to make change is uh, uh, top-down strategies, you know. Basically, you point your finger at something and you say, you should do that, you should do it, go in that direction, this is this way. What parents do, what educators do, what governments do with their policies, their incentives, and so on. Yes, but in the end, if you don't have the bottom-up joining it, it doesn't work. So, we work bottom-up and... Um, because, again, we have the possibility to touch people, we obtain from people that they, they get engaged and they participate and then it becomes alive and it showcases itself naturally and in a very big scale. Also, all the creators, all the designers, all the creative people who are involved in these things are incredibly free to showcase their city. It's not like working on a product. Suddenly, you give the opportunity to a creative advertiser to do whatever he wants in his cities. You have no idea how it makes a change for them because they have been enslaved by brands. So, um, yeah, so what we do is uh, different, genuine, local, you got it, uh, and sustainable because uh, this platform that we built do not stop. In Rio, this platform, the movement is extremely active. Of course, we had the opportunity to develop it even more with the uh, World Cup, and we have the Olympics coming up, now, uh, Brazil is not in a, you can go to the, to the next, Brazil is not a, um, in a good place right now, but everything I'm telling you requires kind of a, a different mindset. And, uh, but, but what we think is that we place people at the center of development, at the cent we place life and diversity at the center of development, at the center of communication, and we empower them. That's why it comes back in the end to your relationship with your people. What do you want to do? You know, uh, because building big constructions on the beach, that, that, that doesn't have impact on, pe on people. You know, that's, that's, they didn't choose that. So now a quote, just for your reading, coming last week. So where I'm, I'm very proud of this quote because this, this mayor is extremely active. He's, he's, a, he's a really good guy. 
He's a kind of a leader among the mayors around the world. Everybody's looking at it very highly. And he embraced the project and he's empowering it completely. So I show you this. And um, now I'm going to show you one clip for the first time. Sound up. Um, this is the first time I show it. And, and it's going to be launched next week in Delhi. Um, have a look. When they remember Delhi, they remember them every time. उन्हें नाहक बातों का जिक्र करते हैं हर बार शायद आदत सी हो गई है उन्हें दोहराने की शायद जब वो दिल्ली का जिक्र करते हैं जाने क्या देखते हैं वो जाने क्या उनको दिखाई देता है जब वो दिल्ली का जिक्र करते हैं काश वो एक जरा और कहते एक जरा और देखते चलो देखें वो बातें जो हमारे दिल को कुछ गुदगुदाती हैं वो बातें जो हमारी रूह को छू जाती हैं बारीकी से देखें अब दिल्ली को दिल्ली वालों की नजर से देखें That's the last one. Do we have it? Yeah, of course. That's where we are. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, storytelling of a different form. Yeah, I'm. Please. Uh, does the city choose your own town, or do you choose the city? No, no. We we do not choose cities. We 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 say yes all the time. <laughs> Yeah, we say yes, of course, we say yes all the time. We, we're trying to change things, you know. Of course, of course, every city can do this, you know. We just can give you the, the kit, you know, we give you the kit. Now, if you go, if you stay on the movement side, we explain you how to do it. If you go on the film side, we make money. Uh, uh, because we have a know-how and it costs us and I have shareholders and I'm going through the whole capitalistic uh, fun thing but uh, uh, but on the movement side we create a lot of content and of course I will show some during the workshop uh, every aspect of life is covered like what Joseph showed you that it could be totally one activation that that we do in a city completely this you know like about giving yes of course you know like a cosmetic brand for example a cosmetic brand considers that they're empowering, empowering us. They're empowering us because we put perfume, right? So we can seduce people and so on. So uh, uh, we made a clip with Boticario, the largest uh, cosmetic brand in, in, in Brazil. And they, that clip is just about um, empowerment. Empowerment from parents to children. We made a very, very touching two-minute video about empowerment at every moment in life, you know? And it's just Boticario doing that. You see, there's no, there's no product placement. There's nothing like that. And trust me, it works for them. They belong there, you know. And Lillian, you know, if, if you don't mind, Lillian, are you here? Hi, Lillian. You know, we were saying, how do you bring an industry to a city and really pump it up from ground zero? This is a pretty nice process. It, because it comes with mentorship, it comes with the industry, it comes with also distribution. Yes, and also I, I wanted to tell you because of what you said earlier, uh, how do you bring talent to a city? Well, 
Well, talent, of course, first, uh, they want uh, freedom of expression. They want to be able to express themselves, but they want an audience. So if you have a platform, if you have a platform, if you have, if you have a place where they can have an audience, you know, and they can, can expand indefinitely, of course, they, they like that, you know. It can be a talent heaven. You have to, to create these things so that people understand they can come create here and they'll be showcased and you will accelerate their uh, development, accelerate, you pull, will put them on the map. What we do when we start a movement is we go see all these creators and we tell them, okay, now every week, every day, every month, whenever you want, you give us content related to your city and we'll post it. At the beginning, you will help us, but I can guarantee you that in three months, we'll be at the origin of most of your traffic. And, and we did that with a lot of contemporary artists, you know, or we do, uh, we, we spread messages of love in, in a city, posters, all sort of things, you know. Can go on and on. <laughs> but we have one and a half hour workshop, so let's move forward. Jonathan, thank you. Last but not least, Jonathan.